Well, ECG in most cases of pulmonary embolism can be non-specific or non-conclusive. It can be deceptive sometimes. ECG is basically performed to rule out myocardial infarction of heart because symptoms of pulmonary embolism can be similar to that of myocardial infarction. Now, myocardial infarction means heart attack in common language or death of heart tissue means cardiac tissue which is known as myocardium. However, ECG may show S1, Q3 and T3 pattern. So what is S1, Q3 and T3 pattern? So S wave, prominent S wave in lead 1, a prominent Q wave in lead 3 and T wave inversion in lead 3. The sketch is a representation of components of a typical ECG trace. Now we don't want to go in detail because this is a complex uh, topic. Just to make it simple, this is P wave, this is Q, this is R, and this is S, this is ST segment, and this is T wave. This is QRS complex. So S1 means in lead 1, you'll see a prominent S wave here. Okay, so it will be deflected here. Q3 means you'll see a prominent Q wave in lead 3. And again in lead 3, you'll see an inverted T wave. Now this uh, ECG does not show S1, Q3 or T3 pattern. But I just wanted to show you lead 1, lead 2, lead 3. So if it uh, were to show an S1, Q3 and T3 pattern, you'll see a prominent S wave in lead 1 here. In lead 3, you'll see a prominent Q wave here. And this T wave will be inverted. So that is S1, Q3, T3 pattern. Now, Cor pulmonale may also be present, which is defined as alteration in the structure and function of a right ventricle. The right ventricle has to work hard in case of presence of pulmonary embolism. So this is pulmonary artery and the blockage is somewhere here or in the branches of left or right pulmonary artery. The heart is trying to push deoxygenated blood into lungs but there is a back pressure and that's why right ventricle has to work hard. Again, core pulmonale is a broad topic and is not specific to pulmonary embolism and can be present in a number of illnesses.